So here we are in early January 2021, the 5th of January to be precise, and in England we are on the verge of going into another lockdown. In the year 2020 we had a lockdown and there have been measures since uh, putting the country, England and Wales and Northern Ireland and Scotland, into different tiers, different uh, categories of restrictions. But in England now, as from midnight tonight, we go into what is in effect, is tier five, which is a lockdown. And it is so disruptive. Everybody knows that. Uh, the government is making the laws for the for the common good in order to get us through this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So disruptive is it that many businesses have ceased to trade. They've ceased to exist. They have gone into liquidation or to use the expression which we tend to use, they've gone bust. And for the businesses which uh, remain open, have remained open, they have had to adapt their practices from the normal way of trading to ensure that they are still able to trade in some way or another. I've entitled this video message Business as Usual. Now, of course, in the current climate, business is far from being, un from being usual. It is, in fact, unusual. Unprecedented times is the expression which has been used quite a lot. So we as a, as, as a populace in England and in the four home nations here in the UK and throughout the world, there's been a huge disruption and business has not been as usual at all. But as, a, as Christians, we can draw strength from the fact that for Almighty God, for him, it is business as usual. That phrase which has been in existence and used for probably centuries, I've seen a reference to it being first used in the 17th century and throughout all the ages uh, that phrase has been used, business as usual. So although for us as, as people in, in all, probably all countries of the world, if not 90% of countries of the world, business is not usual there's been severe disruption and we have to adapt to new ways of living and trading for almighty god it is very much business as usual what is the business in which the god engages let's have a little look at a couple of uh, two or three examples of this i could spend a long time going through all the attributes and the characteristics of Almighty God, how he has worked, he does work, and how he will continue to work. But, but time doesn't permit that. But instead, we'll have a look at just a couple of very important examples. And the first one I want to look at is in the letter to the Colossians. Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, and it's chapter 1. And the particular verse is verse 17. But I'm going to read a few verses preceding that. Let's have a look here. Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to start from verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints, in light for he delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins and he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created both in the heavens and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers 
or authorities. All things have been created by him and for him. For And he is before all things and in him all things hold together. It's talking there in those latter, <coughs> excuse me, couple of verses about the Lord Jesus Christ. But I can't skip over verse 13 there because it is so wonderful and it, 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 it brings a joy to Christians. It should do anyway to understand <coughs> that he, God, has delivered us from the domain of darkness or from the authority of darkness, from the kingdom of darkness. And we know, do we not, that darkness is the domain of Satan, the devil. And every person born in, in this world enters the kingdom of Satan and is under the domain and the authority of Satan until that person becomes born again by the Spirit of God to become a new creation, to be given a new birth, to be regenerated, to be transferred, delivered from the domain of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. I could talk far more about that one verse 13, but that's not the subject of this particular message. But I had, as I mentioned, I, I had to just dwell on that for um, for several seconds there to just bring out the depth and the riches and the joyousness that that brings to Christians about being transferred from one position into another position. But then we come to this verse 17, and he, Jesus, is before all things, and in him all things hold together, or all things subsist, or all things endure. This is God's business, and for him it is business as usual. The Lord Jesus Christ has been described I, I don't know by whom, but it's a phrase that I picked up some years ago. The Lord Jesus has been described very simply as being uh, the glue which holds all creation together. I hope you don't find that description of him uh, as being disrespectful. It's not one of his titles, but it, I think, adequately describes the Lord Jesus holding everything together. Why do... Why why is it that our planet Earth it doesn't move around in the universe? Why is it that the other planets and the stars, uh, and why don't they all just move about at random? It's because the Lord Jesus holds all things together. That's wonderful, isn't it? That's the business, part of the business of Almighty God, which maybe we haven't thought about particularly before, but for, for, for the Lord God... In these COVID-19 days, it is business as usual. Going back to the book of, or the letter, to uh, the church in Rome, Romans. We'll have a look in uh, chapter 1. And we're going to read from back maybe verse 16. But before we do, I need to say the Bible tells us. For the Lord God, it is always business as usual, because it says in Malachi, in the book in the Hebrew Scriptures, and it's chapter 3, verse 6, it, it, part of that verse, verse 6 in chapter 3 of Malachi, says, I, the Lord, do not change. And then again, further on in our Holy Bibles, in the letter to the Hebrews, in chapter 13, verse 8, it simply says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, today and forever. He does not change. It is always business as usual for the Lord God. He is, to use a, a, an expression, he is immutable. He is unchangeable. He does not change. He cannot change his nature. That's the Lord God. And for him, business as usual. Let's look at Romans chapter 1, as I said we would. Verse 16, just read for two or three verses. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. Part of the business of Almighty God is communicating himself, revealing himself to those people who are open-minded, who have eyes to see, who have ears to hear, rather than being closed-minded, rather than being wishing to suppress the truth, to, to put a lid on everything and not being interested and rejecting Almighty God. But for those people who are, as I say, open-minded, we just look around in the open air and we can see things, we can see God's creation. And particularly at night, of course, we can see the stars, assuming there are no clouds in the sky. But God is a communicating God, and he has revealed from um, his creation to everybody. That's his business. So everybody, as it says here, is without excuse in verse 20. If anybody searches for the Lord God, they will readily find him if they are honest and genuine and they search for him with an open, true heart. They really want to find Almighty God. They will find him because his, his presence, his existence, his creative power, the fact that the Lord Jesus holds everything in, in position as it should be, these things, these things are evident. And although we're in the midst of a, a COVID-19 crisis, yes, we are. It's business as usual for the Lord God. He is still communicating. And I must also here look at one verse in particular, as I did in, in Colossians, verse 17 of Romans chapter 1. It talks about, for in it, which is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, for in that gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. It's the righteousness of God is revealed. Those two words there have to be in Scripture of God, because otherwise, if it simply said for in it, righteousness is revealed, we might be thinking, well, maybe it's our own righteousness as, as a human race, as individuals. But no, no, no. We, as human beings, have no righteousness of our own making. We are inherently unrighteous and we need to be regenerated. We need to be made righteous. We need to be given the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's only Christians, <clears throat> those who trust in an ongoing basis on what the Lord Jesus did. It's only Christians who whom the Lord God regards as being righteous. For in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. It's a, a quotation there from the book of Habakkuk. Righteousness is, ach is achieved, is obtained by faith. Another word for faith here is trust. So those people who trust in the work of Christ on the cross and the necessity of that work of Christ on the cross, who become born again because they repent of their sinful state, they repent of their sinful ways, they, they want to do a U-turn and, and, and come before Almighty God uh, apologising for their, their sinful state and their hostility to him. Those people who become born again they are given the gift of faith by God and they are given God's righteousness. It's just wonderful if we stop and just want to look at these verses and the themes in, in the Holy Bible in a little bit more detail, we, we obtain so much more. So where are we? Business as usual for the Lord God is him offering his righteousness. And that is, that is just truly wonderful. But 
Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the universes, and there are billions of them, as, I, as, I'm, as I'm told, this God, this creator God, he wants to offer to us sinful human beings his righteousness. Well, isn't that an offer that you cannot refuse? Isn't that an offer that, that cannot be turned down or rejected? I would obviously, I don't know, I'm almost exasperated because many people do reject this offer of Almighty God. But in doing so, they show that they are suppressing the truth in their own unrighteousness. So, as I draw this to a close, God cannot change. The Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. For God, it's business as usual, even though for us human beings in the world in 2020 and now into 2021, things seem topsy-turvy and we are restricted in so many ways and trading is, is conducted in such a different way as to almost be unrecognisable and businesses have gone bust, they've gone into liquidation and many are struggling to carry on and they have adopted new methods. In all this state of affairs, I, the Lord, do not change, as I've quoted to you as being part of verse 6 of the book of Malachi, chapter 3. It's because God is immutable. He is unchangeable. He cannot change. So always for him, he offers himself to a sinful human race. And the offer is there for all who would come to the Lord God, understanding their sinful state, their errant ways their failures as human beings no matter what success they think they've they've obtained for all the, such people who come before god in repentance being penitent of being sorrowful for the mess they've made of their lives and trusting that the lord jesus christ took our sin upon himself he took our punishment upon himself on that cross at calvary because sin deserves a punishment. Wrongdoing deserves a punishment for all people who come to God in that way and apologise and want to have a new start, a new way of life, to be reborn, regenerated. For those people, God offers his righteousness. Hence, I can say that with him, with our Father in heaven, the Son and the Holy Spirit, it is and it always will be business as usual.